Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin, and I want to welcome you to my online lectures for ITSC 2321 Object Oriented Programming Using Java. This series of on online lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will will consist of quite a few hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will be broken down into YouTube length segments of approximately 15 minutes each. This is the beginning of part one of lecture five titled Indirection, Array Objects, and Casting. I, inv I invite you to visit my college website at the URL that I just highlighted. That is where you will find the syllabus for this course along with other information regarding the course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the URL that I have just highlighted. There you will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer related topics. Those students who are enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 which you will find at the URL that I have just highlighted. That is, in addition to the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. Welcome to the beginning of lecture number five, titled In Direction, Array Objects, and Casting. The program that I will explain in this lesson produces no graphics and does not require the use of Barb Erickson's media library. Among others, the program that I will explain in this lesson illustrates the following object-oriented programming concepts. Multiple levels of indirection, a one-element array of type object, storing a reference to an object in an array element as type object. An anonymous object, passing a reference to a subclass object as type object, and casting an incoming object reference to access a method. The brief program specifications are to write a program named prob05 that uses the class definition that begins on the upper right of your screen to produce an output similar to that shown in figure 1 on the bottom right of your screen. The text output shown in the bottom right of your screen will appear on your command line screen. The program generates and uses a random data value, and for that reason, the actual values displayed will differ from one run to the next. However, in all cases, the two values shown on the bottom right of your screen must match. You may define new classes as necessary to solve your, to cause your program to behave as required. However, you may not modify the class definition for the class name Prob05 that begins on the upper right of your screen. As usual, I will explain this program by breaking it down into program fragments and explaining the fragments. I will begin my explanation with the driver class named Prob05 
that begins on the upper right side of your screen. Everything in Listing 1 should be familiar to you by now, except for the last statement that I have highlighted on the right of your screen. Before I get into the discussion of this statement, I will discuss some of the important characteristics of array objects in Java. Here are some of the characteristics of array objects in Java presented in no particular order. All arrays in Java are one-dimensional arrays. However, multi-dimensional arrays can be created by creating tree structures of one-dimensional array. Each array in Java is encapsulated in a special type of object that I will refer to as an array object. As with all objects, an array object must be accessed via a reference to the array object. When the declared type of an array is one of the eight primitive types, the actual values are stored in the array elements in the array object. When the declared type of an array is the type of an object, either an array object or, or an ordinary object, references to the object are stored in the array elements and the objects themselves are actually stored somewhere else in memory. As with instance variables, the elements in an array are initialized with the standard default values for the types involved, either zero or false or null. However, there is one exception to this case, or there is one exception to this rule, and that exception is used in this program. The array structure that is encapsulated in an array object may have none, one, or more elements. Yes, it is possible for a Java array to have no elements, but that normally occurs only in special circumstances. So here is the first question for those of you who have studied ahead. What characteristic of an array object makes it possible for the program to always determine the number of elements in the array? Every array object contains a special property named length. The length property contains the number of elements in an array. Therefore, it is always possible to determine the number of elements in an array object at runtime simply by accessing the value of the length property for the array object. The length or size of the array is established when the array object is instantiated and cannot be changed thereafter. Here is a more difficult question. What is the significance of the special syntax that you see highlighted on the upper right of your screen? There is a special syntax that allows for the instantiation of an array object and the initialization of the array elements in a single statement. The expression that you see highlighted on the upper right of your screen is an example of that syntax. Although the quality of this recording might not be good enough to make this possible to discern, the highlighted material that I'm pointing to now begins with a left curly brace although it may look like a parenthesis to you, and ends with a matching right 
curly brace. That is the special syntax to which I am referring. So the special syntax consists of a comma separated list of element values inside a pair of matching curly braces as highlighted on the upper right of your screen. When this special syntax is used, the length of the resulting ray is determined automatically by the number of values in the list. The type of the array is determined by the types of the elements in the list. This special syntax instantiates an array object of the correct length and populates the elements in that array structure with the specified values. A reference to the array object is returned in much the same way that a constructor for an ordinary object returns a reference to the object. As is always the case, if the reference is stored in a variable, the type of the reference must be assignment compatible with the type of the variable. So, what does assignment compatible mean? For the answer to this, I recommend that you go to Google and search for the following keywords to see what I, I have written about this in the past. The keywords are Baldwin, Java, quote, assignment compatible, unquote. So, here is the next question. What is the value of the length property for the array object that is instantiated by the highlighted statement in the upper right of your screen? The last statement in the upper right of your screen instantiates an array object of type Prob 05 my class A containing a one element array structure. That single array element is initialized with a reference to a new object of type Prob 05 my class A. That object actually exists somewhere else in memory. That object is not stored in the array structure. Only the reference is stored in the array structure. 